mental health treatment. Treatment for mental health disorders are not one size fits all, and it does not it does not of it, and 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 it does not offer cure. So as we said before, and um, you know, treatment does not offer cure mental health. Mental health is is it is something which is ongoing. But what you can get from it and going through counseling or taking medication is you can manage your symptoms. Um, the, the, instead, treatment aims to reduce the symptoms of or uh, the symptoms uh, and address the underlying cause and make the condition more manageable. Medication does that, counseling does that. It might, it, it, it might, you, a person might need a combination of treatment because uh, some, some people have a better result by multi, um, multi-angle approach. So what we mean by multi-angle approach is that um, you might need sometimes going to take medication, you might need to go to therapy, you might need uh, what you call it, um, exercising, and going to exercise, you might need um, to actually um, go to yoga. Some, some people they found they, 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 they find it to, to manage their anger, to go to martial arts or boxing classes. So finding a different way to manage uh, your, your mental health is very important. So taking an active approach for yourself, not waiting for the professionals only to tell you what to do, but you know yourself better than anyone else. Having, um, having basically notes of what triggers you, what's going on with you and discussing with your therapy is very important. Medication. Okay, there are four types of um, of category of medication used to treat symptoms of mental health and disorders: anti um, antidepressant, anti anxiety medication, anti anti psychotic medication, and mood stabilizers medication. Which type is best for you will depend on the symptoms you you symptoms that you have. Um, and the and, and the health issues you you may you may face people people might try might try a few different medication um, before they find they find the right medication for them. Again, when it comes to medication, uh, especially when it comes to mental health, it's not something which is um, how do I say, which is a hundred percent. Sometimes they hit and miss. Everyone everyone reacts to medication differently. Um, and, 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 and the symptoms that they have is unique to them. So medication, if your doctor uh, or your psychiatrist kind of like describe medication for you and it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that basically that uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot be cured or you need to stop the medication. It means you just need to try another one. One of the main common um, problems that I see that a lot of people face when you take medication the first couple of weeks you might have a lot of side effects. And when people see the side effects, they, they stop the medication and go, it really, it really doesn't go well with me. So the most important thing is when you take your medication, look at the side effects, um, see the side effects that can actually, how those side effects can impact on you and give the, the period of time, give at least two weeks before the medication can settle down and your body can get used to it. Then afterwards, if that medication does not settle down, then you can go back to your um, psychologist or, or GP and ask for different medication. But most of the time, you need to just be patient with it and, and, and see how that medication um, to take basically hold of your body and your body get used to it. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Okay. My favorite, my favorite slide. Um, psychotherapy and counseling. It, it is an opportunity to talk to a professional experience and about your feelings, your thoughts, your ideas. Uh, the therapy, the counselor is, is, is like a sounding board who's quite, who's somebody who's, who's, who's basically, um, who, who will give you confidentiality unconditional positive regard uh, and congruence. What I mean is that, what I mean by this is, is someone that you know is not gonna judge you, somebody that you know that everything that you speak to is gonna be confidential and they're there to kind of like help you through 
whatever you're going through. They're going to be like a guide. So they're going to go through the experience that you're going through. They're going to try to, um, through through empathy, they will try to live to to see the world from your point of view and try to and, and trying to get you to see things that you won't be able to see by clarifying, um, asking you questions and, 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 and feedback. Those are kind of ways that the counselor worked with you. Next slide. The term, the term therapy refers to several styles of talking therapy. And the therapy can use a can use can use different and different styles and um, including um, they, they can treat different different symptoms like uh, panic attack, anxiety, anger issues, bipolar, post-traumatic stress. Um, but what we do not treat is serious mental health. So all of these, when you talk about um, panic attack, anxiety, uh, anger issues, bipolar, and post-traumatic stress, these are called common mental health. And serious mental health could be, um, you know, um, bipolar can, can, be, can be described as serious mental health sometimes. But when you talk about schizophrenia, and when you talk about and somebody who, who's who's having uh, what you call a, an, um, who's having an episode, all of those things uh, could be serious mental health because when somebody's having an episode, they might be, um, they might need to, to be sanctioned or given medication to calm them down. Um, during, during the session, you might, during the session, your therapy can work, can work to change your thoughts and behavior. So when you, when you come to therapy, you can talk about your past, your present, how things are going on with you, anything that's going through in your mind. Because sometimes when you're going through trauma or anxiety, you're, you can, you can be overwhelmed and your mind cannot be, you might not be thinking properly and you can overreact. So you need somewhere or somebody to contain you or contain you to kind of help you to see what's really going on. And sometimes all you need is just to talk to someone without being judged. You know, uh, stigma is one of the biggest issues that we have. So that is one of the, one of the things that therapy does with you. Therapy is not just for people. Yeah, this is, the, this is a good one. Therapy is not just for people uh, with, uh, with, with problems. This is, this is something that a lot of people think that I can only go to therapy when, um, when I have a problem or, or when I have anxiety. One of the things that people don't take consideration is the more successful people in, the most successful people in this planet right now all of them have some kind of therapy to help them to uh, to help them to get the best that they can be. So a therapist, most of the time when you come to therapist, is exploring what's going on with you, seeing uh, any issues that you have, and get into that place. You get into that place quicker than you normally would. So it's like um, when you go to gym, for example, when you have a personal trainer, when you don't have a personal trainer, it's not the same. The results are faster. So if you have a therapist, um, it's as if you're having a personal trainer. You will get there. You will get there quicker and more efficiently. So if you don't suffer from mental health um, and you just stress that work and all of that, by having a therapist, it will help you to deal and manage that stress in a more, more better way. And you will have a place to release those those stress and some way to kind of like cleanse yourself. So having um, having basically a therapist in your life is actually good for your health, good for your emotion, good for your uh, for your family. So when you come from work, you don't have to release that anger and that um, that negative vibe that you got in your family. So whenever you come to a therapy to, to a therapist, you de you, you detox. You put all of those anger and all of those issues that you have, you dump it on your therapist, and you by the time you leave, you feel relieved. We're gonna go to the next slide. And hospitalized and resident treatment. Some people might might need a brief period of intervention treatment at the hospital or or resident treatment facilities. There are program. The, the, these programs allow allow overnight for in for for independent treatment or 
prolonged prolonged stay, um, and and prolonged stay can last for months or even years to to combat serious um, serious conditions, serious conditions which sometimes a person cannot um, if somebody is quite. Um, harmful to themselves and the society and they kind of look after themselves they need to be um, they need to be in, in a residence until they can able to look after themselves so most of the time some people might be in months or even years but um, some people do come out and able to live a fuller life so I have um, I have seen people who've been sanctioned and now they're doctors so it doesn't mean just because you're sanctioned or you're staying there for months, your life cannot come back to normal. This is another um, kind of myth that people have that just because you suffer from mental health, you cannot live a fuller life. There are also day, day programs where people can, can participate short, short period of treatment. So when somebody has stayed for months, what they will do is, and they're about to leave the, day, the daycare, they will have the day program. So what they'll do is during the day they can come out and during the night they can they can basically stay at the um at, at, at the hospital and this is just gradually getting them back to to normal life um and this is what the day and uh, day treatment is about um so when people are hold there for a while and they've been there for such a long time and the day program helps them to kind of integrate back into society I'm gonna to go to the next slide. Cultural appropriate treatment uh, and um, an intervention. This is something that I that I see a lot in um, when it comes to, especially when it comes to ethnic minority. Um, when when you go to a therapist who doesn't really um, or, or or doctor or whatever who doesn't understand the cultural dynamics, the faith base, the food, um, you know. Um, so when you look at my mom or my the older generation, they're very much straight talking. When they talk to you, that you can you do that? Can you do that? There's no such, oh, please, darling, can you get this? They don't say that. So when somebody deals with you and you behave in that, in that manner where you don't say please or thank you, but it's not because you're rude, it's just the way your culture is, the other person might take you or some might, might, might translate this in a very um, different way. For example, if, if, uh, if a doctor comes in who's a male and you're female and you say, you know what, I, 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 wanna, I wanna see a female doctor, the doctor might actually take offense thinking, well, are you trying to say I cannot do the job as, as I did the job that I'm supposed to? A few, even a female, they might take offense too when they don't understand the religious, uh, the religious or the cultural understanding of it, and this and this can even add into uh, experience of racism or discrimination. So again, um, having somebody who can understand your culture, your religion, um, the, the the language barrier, I think is very is a is a necessity for any for any basically patient or client to have the empathy understanding because this person doesn't have the time. Or the strength to educate another uh, a staff member. They're here to be looked after. So having a cultural uh, competent person, I think, is something that we need. We're a long way away from it, and we need to actually uh, work. And this is one of the reasons I became a therapist is because I knew there were lack of cal uh, cultural uh, awareness when it comes to black people and the way young black men are being. Um, been stigmatized the way Muslims have been stigmatized, and it, I think this is the last. This is the last slide. Um, here are some references if you like to look into it and uh, do your own due diligence and have a, re, uh, uh, a look into it. So I will ho hopefully you benefit from it. Thank you very much.